Welcome everyone. Uh, this is Daniel Izquierdo. I am today together with Diane Mueller. And we are going to present uh, from Mark to Science, Community Development in a Data-Driven World. All of this research is uh, the result of uh, last months of working together. Um, and thank you, thank you for this opportunity to present at the Open Source Summit uh, Europe. So this, the research I was referring to is based on this IEEE software paper that uh, we released uh, some months ago in, in November, December 2019, as, as you can see. Uh, this is, uh, and this is, this is the work and the, based on our experience during uh, when analyzing the CNCF ecosystem, OpenShift and other projects that are kind of related to the cloud ecosystem. So we can see that there are a big amount of interrelations. We need to uh, seeing all of the way we are all working uh, downstream and upstream. So this is the main motivation of the article. So hi, welcome, and thank you for inviting us here today. Um, my, I am Diane Mueller. I am the Director of Community Development over at uh, Red Hat, and I've been working with Daniel and his um, team at Bitergia for probably the past four or five years, um, uh, using them on a number of open source projects that I um, collaborate and help um, do community development for at Red Hat. And if you know Red Hat, you know, you've probably seen this slide before. Um, and it's really um, the crux of how Red Hat looks at um, technology development um, and that our, in our DNA is open source. Everything we do is open sourced and we, really strongly feel that it is where all the innovation and technology is coming from these days. But also these days, there are millions of projects to pay attention to. The one that I, my primary focus is, um, and probably a lot of yours is as well, maybe is um, around, based in the CNCF, is the big crux of um, the point of intersection for a lot of these projects. I happen to work on a project um, called OpenShift at Red Hat. Um, and it's open source sibling um, called OKD. Um, but there are millions, literally hundreds of millions of GitHub repos that pop up, new ones every day, millions of developers. Um, we have the data from 2018 here. Uh, obviously, I have to update my slides sometime soon. But um, it's really one of those things where we're trying to figure out how to um, best connect with our and stay connected with the developers in the communities that we um, plan. And so some of what we've been doing um, because OKD and OpenShift is really a function of Kubernetes um, and all of the other pro projects that are in the ecosystem. We have shifted from, um, no pun intended, from being a single focused project um, community development effort to having to collaborate across all of these communities. And to do that is um, very difficult these days. There are so many projects, there are so many people involved in those projects. So what we've done is taken over the past it's almost four years, really a much more data-driven approach to, to looking at who's in our communities, how to connect with them, and how to stay engaged with them. So if you've seen the CNCF, um, and that's really the crux of the talk that we're going to give today is really focusing on the CNCF. There are other projects, OCI, um, Istio, Knative, the whole service mesh world. Um, but for today, we're really going to focus in on the, the CNCF as our example. And if you've looked at the landscape CNCF.io page, it's crazy. Um, it's wonderful. It's an amazingly healthy, engaged, lots of um, partners, ISVs, upstream projects, all of these people, we need to remember how these projects and roadmaps and releases all fit into the OKD and OpenShift space. So to do that, you can't use traditional um, pure, you know, simply hall room conversations at conferences, which I miss like greatly these days anyways, to stay informed. What we've tried to do is start to develop some strategies for um, continuous connection. Um, that's, you know, we're all connected via Slack, via IRC still, um, Twitter, GitHub. Um, if you don't have a notification popping up on your desk every five minutes, 50 seconds, depends on how many Slack channels you're in, um, you see the desire that everybody has to connect. And with um, the world now in COVID, um, and 
virtualized. We really have to be able to figure out new ways um, of meeting our communities where they are, create the content um, and curate it to um, enable our customers, our end users, our project leads to educate each other, to connect with each other. So a lot of, there's a lot of work going on in the background um, and trying to encourage positive engagement um, and get people to share and contribute and give feedback. Really that engagement is the key. How do we know who to engage with, who is engaging in our communities and use some new tools um, about, you know, to automate some of the execution of the outreach and the connections. Um, in our world, we do organizational ba based membership to speed up the number of people who can be in um, the OpenShift community, which is called OpenShift Commons. And we do a lot more than we probably did in the past around relationship management and automating the workflows. And the key really for me is trying to do all of this without dehumanizing the connections to keep them healthy. Um, but to keep them healthy and to do all of this, we need the data. And that's where um, the work that we've done with Betergia and over the past few years has really um, allowed us to apply a more data-driven approach to community development. And so I'm going to let um, Daniel take, take this from here and tell us a little bit about how we're using the Betergia tools to do that. Um, thank you. Thank you, Diane. Um, so I really like your point about uh, not dehumanize the, the work of, of the community manager and, and how to deal with the community. Because what we are trying to, to have here is to scale ourselves from uh, 10, 20 years ago, where communities were of a couple of hundred of developers to communities, uh, CNCF, where, where just the open source projects are around uh, thousands of developers, right? So with this kind of tools is where we can have and bring this new data-driven approach uh, to look for those newcomers and help them in during the onboarding process or to understand what other vendors are facilitate their uh, their trip or their journey uh, to, to to be successful with with a specific technology right um, so the the analysis uh, that we we've done is based on on grimoire lab uh, technology so this is a, a, a project from the from the Linux foundation is the acronym for community health analytics for open source software um, all of this is, of course, 100% software, so you can use this um, and let us know what you think about this. But in general, what we have, what you can see on the left, are the different data sources. So if you think about the data sources, some of them mentioned by Diane, so we have Slack channels. But for, for development, we have gate repositories, we have issues, we have uh, code review processes. Um, doesn't matter if you are using GitHub, GitLab, that license stack, or any other uh, self, uh, self build uh, infrastructure. It happens that there are typically from five to 10 different uh, pieces of infrastructure that we are all using uh, for communication channel development, et cetera, et cetera. And all of these can be extracted because all of these are uh, publicly available. So the data source is leaving a trace uh, anytime that we are committing a piece of code or sending an email. So all of these can be extracted by Percival, which is the tool you can see close to the to the data sources. And this all is stored in, in, in Elasticsearch. So the, the tool in this case is using Elasticsearch and, and a downstream version of, of Kibana. We have on the top uh, a tool which is kind of key for this discussion, which is Sorting Hat. And Sorting Hat uh, is dealing with identities. And um, we have uh, specific policies as GDPR uh, that are important for, uh, for different regions of the world. And in this case, this is Open Source Summit Europe. So sorting hat is uh, GDPR ready, uh, with, and this means that this can deal is dealing in a different database with all of the identities and affiliations information from all of the developers that are participating in a given open source project. So the use case that we have for today is CNCF. So in this case, we have aggregated all of this information, and we can anonymize, we can uh, uh, remove developers if this is uh, asked by them. So uh, this is about having the right tools. Uh, to have um, a specific analysis for open source projects. In this case, this is open source tools to, to analyze open source communities. Then at the very end of the of the tool chain, you can see the, the browser and Kibiter. So those are the tools where we are in this case building a specific dashboards. And the, the analysis that you will see now are uh, our dashboards that are produced with, with Grimoire Lab. 
So what we are trying to do is to make sense of all of these scales that we have in the data sources, all of this information that is available by, by the CNCF ecosystem, and then at the very end, produce business value in, in a, either in a dashboard or you can analyze, uh, <clears throat> you can query directly uh, Elasticsearch, for instance, and produce your own Jupyter notebook. So uh, that depends on you. But information is there. The, the important thing is about having all of this centralized somewhere. So the next slide, please. Um, yeah, and the, and the use case for for today is the the cloud native computing foundation. Um, these are these are the graduated and incubated projects when when we were doing this analysis, which is like uh, two three months ago. So maybe there are some new now. I'm, I, I think, don't exactly. I think know. a few other ones have have graduated since then. Um, at, but I think the the key here is is really taking a look at the connectedness in these um, mm -hmm. projects, and from our our perspective. Every one of these projects is something that impacts on um, OpenShift and Kubernetes, and so staying aware of them and seeing the connections. So if you can explain a little bit about the connections um, and what we're seeing here, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so each of the dots, so we have like these big stars in the middle as Kubernetes and others, but if you can probably see like a small pink dots, right? So those pink dots are developers, and each of those developers have participated in, in different projects. Um, and in some cases, one or more projects. So we, we see that Kubernetes, they have like the, the biggest, right, number of developers that we can see that are connected to Kubernetes. But then we can see that there are some others, as for instance, uh, um, on the top we have, uh, we, we can see Tick, Tick B. And this project is uh, interconnected uh, by some developers that are in the middle to Kubernetes. So this means that there are different dots, different developers that are working in different projects, in this case, in these two projects. All of this interconnectedness that we can see right in the middle, that chaos is beautiful because that means that there are uh, hundreds of developers that are working here and there. They are working in, in, in Dragonfly, in CNI, Helm, Core DNS, Kubernetes, Prometheus, and they are all working around. Um, so this mess around here is is this interesting part about, about open source because this means they are all collaborating and working together. Yeah, and, and the mess is what open source makes open source so lovely. Yeah. So if we look at some of the key projects here um, that that really impact gRPC and and the the larger, more um, populated projects, perhaps um, and active projects, maybe um, with more people in them. You know, a few of them to point out are Prometheus and Argo and gRPC. Uh, as as well as Kubernetes, but there is a number of of them here. And then you might want to talk a little bit more about these high, the highly interconnected, the chaos here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, as I mentioned before, so we have we we can have developers that are working in more than one project. So if they are working in, um, for instance, in Prometheus and Kubernetes, we'll see one pink dot which is connecting both both projects. We've been doing this analysis for for OpenShift as well, um, and we saw that there are a lot of developers that are working, for instance, in OpenShift project, but in Kubernetes as well. And of course, it, it makes a lot of sense because uh, uh, OpenShift is a, a distribution of Kubernetes with with, with some extra vitamins, right? Um, so we we have all of this uh, interconnection is is taking place because all of these projects are really really interconnected. So we can see, um, and this is another important uh, thing to discuss for today. I don't have the context knowledge of this discussion. I I'm only bringing, let's say, that the tooling. Um, and some skills in terms of producing all of this data. But the thing that I can see here is that we have some projects that are kind of interrelated between them, as we can see, Open Policy A, so there are a couple of projects, uh, CRI, O, Harbor Rook, they are kind of related to gRPC or Cloud Events, while right in the middle we have CNI, Dragonfly, Help, and Core DNS. So this means something, this means that at least developers that are working in those four projects, CNI, Dragonfly, Help, and Core DNS, they are working at least in more than one, and that's why they, these four projects are, are, are so close, right? And they are, again, in the middle of this interconnection because they are highly related to Kubernetes, Prometheus, and to the projects that we can see on the top are the projects that we can see, we can see at the bottom. So this means this interconnection. And on the other hand, we, we have projects that are less interconnected. So we can see it as Falco, Linkerd, or or um, 
you uh, at, at the at the top of the of the slide. And those projects, what happens is that there are not that many developers that are working in this project and in other projects. From a uh, from a sync perspective, and um, uh, Diane probably you will uh, you will detail a bit more here. But from a sync perspective, if uh, this is this is telling me that developers are not that aware of what's going on in the rest of the projects, at least from a from a technical perspective in terms from, of from a, uh, data, from a data perspective, they might not be as mm -hmm. highly connected to the other projects, and so that might be where we need to bridge some communication. It's not always true, but and this is where having domain knowledge of um, of the communities here, just having the data isn't really enough, and we'll talk a little bit about that later, but. Um, the thing that I, that, we, that I wanted to highlight here is that identifying some of the people who are the connectors between these projects has been really helpful for us um, from the OpenShift perspective. And you know, we add a layer on this when we do the analysis for OpenShift and um, so we can see where OpenShift developers and engineers um, and participants in these communities are too. And so you can filter this by organization, change the colors. It's there's, it's, there's some really useful bits in here that have helped us a lot, uh, especially, um, for example, when IBM acquired Red Hat and I all of a sudden had to realize who were the IBMers in our communities too. So there's some really cool features um, that have really enabled us to connect with our communities better here. and. Um, one of the things that I think is key here is this um, concept of betweenness and centrality um, between project. These people um, the, and these personas and developers are the ones, from my perspective, who are bridging, who are able to bring, you know, this release is going to impact on this project. These features need to be in here. And that's where you start to see pull requests coming back and forth between projects and cross-linking. So, and trying to find those people who can help you understand the health and the level of engagement or maturity of a project. So um, maybe Falco, just because it's on the outskirts here and not interconnected, doesn't mean that it's not healthy and a mature or an engaged community. It just means this is where it needs to be connected. So that's where domain knowledge is here. So you've got to be a little careful about that as well. So one of the things that we've done um, once we start to identify who these developers are and who these people are is to break them out by um, personalities. And that's really helped us, or personas rather, um, to untangle all of these community relationships. And uh, we only have a few minutes um, to, to do this talk. And this is probably a deeper, deeper talk about how to um, start looking, because you can look at this data in over historical. You can see, get notified when new people join, all kinds of really cool things. But starting to look at um, tangential um, personas, people who um, are not connected into the city, in, into con into projects, connector personas, newcomers, who are the project leads, um, and organizational personas. Um, when a new organization joins into a community. So we see this um, from our perspective, we have um, a very um, strong end user community in Kubernetes and with OpenShift as well, with over 3,000, almost 3,000 um, organizations deploying OpenShift, our end users are now uh, actively, a lot of them participating in the upstream. Um, so we're watching as they become engaged and that's way, that way we know, um, you know where, where we can connect with them, get feedback from them, help them, coach them, do all the stuff um, that we do with um, inner source commons and chaos and all of the other foundations to make sure that these um, personas are nurtured and engaged with um, as, as they want to be. So that's really been key. So I know we, this is a very short talk, so we could go on all day about this, but some of the things that these data, you know, having this data and being able to use these tools um, uh, has really been essential for me um, from a community development point, point of view and for Red Hat um, in some of the upstream coordination, identifying people who are key um, connectors, um, it has been like a godsend for us to just at the very least, if that's the only thing you do with these tools is to identify people, you're doing good. The other thing is that I think um, everybody has recognized that it's more about cross-community work um, versus single project focused. Um, that's been 
Um, historically, a community manager in the past would be really focused on getting people to contribute to their project. And here, we want our end users in the upstream. We're in the upstream in all of these projects too because we pull them and, um, into our products and our offerings um, and our distributions. Um, the persona analysis really helps us explore the structure of projects, make sure that there's, there's stability, that there are newcomers coming in, that we're keeping them engaged. Um, the healthy relationships really matter a lot here. Um, making sure that they have the, the content and the educational material that they need, the documentation, um, that they have the CI, CD and build processes um, that they need to be effective in developing and creating these new projects and, new, and putting new innovations into them. Um, as I said a couple of times, um, domain knowledge is imperative. Um, you can give a data tool, I don't know, there's probably some metaphor there, a data tool, you can lead a horse to water, but if the, the water, the horse doesn't know that it's water, they're, they're not going to drink it or, or whatever. But it's like you really have to understand the technology in order to really take this because you may draw the wrong conclusions. Um, and as always, um, the data matters. And that's really um, one of the key things that's been working with Viturgia, um, being able to aggregate um, use the, the sorting hat, get clean, curated data and great tools um, to work with. Um, that's been amazing um, for us over the past few years. And um, people always ask what's next. And now that IBM has acquired Red Hat, like I'm hoping to get some IBM Watson tools um, up and apply some predictive analysis here. Uh, I think that's, that's going to be key. Because um, for me, uh, this is, uh, being a Canadian, I always throw in some hockey metaphor, but um, the idea is um, all this historical analysis is good, but skate to where the puck is going, not to where it's been, has been really um, the credo here. Because I think as we watch new projects enter these, these ecosystems, um, it's really gets them on our radar as soon as they arrive, as soon as the Sandbox projects come into the CNCF. Um, and even earlier, as you can watch um, deeper into GitHub as new projects arise, even pre-sandbox pre stage stuff. So it's been really very, very useful for us. So you want to add a few more words in there of conclusion, Daniel, and then we'll do some Q&A? Yeah, um, so we we have this sentence from Lord Kelvin that says that without data, you are, you are just another person with, with an opinion or, or that without data, you, you can you cannot measure, so you cannot improve, right? Um, but on, on the other side of things, uh, given the tools that we have nowadays, uh, big data and so on, I would say that uh, without an opinion, you are just another person with data. So we need to play with, to balance both, both, both sides. That's awesome. All. Great. Well, um, let's see if we can advance this slide one more time. So, um, now we're on to the Q&A and um, hopefully um, you'll all enjoy Open Source Summit Europe and um, we can connect either in the chat rooms or in the Q&A here right after this talk. And uh, here's how to get a hold of us um, and we're happy to take your questions now. Thanks Thank everybody. You.